Hey y'all, welcome to Mindful Current Buzz. This is where I'm gonna give you news, but I'm gonna break it down in small, juicy pieces. I am so excited to be here today. This is my first broadcast. And so I would really, really, really love it if you would hit that like or subscribe and or subscribe button because it would mean the world to me. It costs you nothing, you know, doesn't hurt, but it would definitely mean the world to me. Okay, so since I'm hailing here from the great state of Ohio, I thought it might be fun to talk about something that has roots in Ohio. So I am talking about, oh wait, I should actually give you some definitions. Okay, in Ohio, we have these two colleges that have the same name. One college is named The Ohio State University. Now that college has, it's a Big Ten college, it's in Columbus, you've probably seen it on TV, maybe like football games, basketball games, they're the Buckeyes. There's another college, it's called Ohio University, and that is in Athens, Ohio. And that's really our first public college in the state of Ohio. That's really the, where it started, right there. So we're, but we call that one OU. We are talking about OU. That's the one we're gonna talk about today. So, back in like the, I'm guessing like the late 90s, definitely the early 2000s, OU had a basketball player by the name of Brandon Hunter. And he was, he was, he was living his good, best life. He was doing the thing with the, you know, the basketball team, okay? In fact, when he graduated, he had a short stint with the NBA and he had even a longer career overseas. So he was like a real deal basketball player, okay? So now he's like 42 years old. He's, you know, he's a man, man, you know what I mean? He's into his life, his career, all that kind of good stuff. And he's coming out of hot yoga. He collapsed. He died, you know, and that's, you know, I don't do yoga. I, that's not why, but now this gives me one more reason why I should just continue to stay away from it. But anyway, he dies and people who remember him, his family, friends, all, they were just like, oh my God, you know, they were torn up over it. They, could, they couldn't believe it. So some news outlets picked this up that Brandon Hunter from OU died. And they talked about, you know, just a little blurb about what happened, talked about his history, you know, all that kind of stuff. Well, MSN had one of their, um, I don't know if it was, it's like a, an associated, not associated press, but their writers who are associated with MSN wrote an obituary for Brandon. And people are suspecting that they used AI to write the obituary because in the obituary, it said Brandon Hunter was useless at 42, right? So in addition, it was full of typos you know, misspelled words, you name it, just a bunch of garbage. So people are like, oh my goodness, they have used AI for this obituary and no one even proofread it, you know? So they put this thing up, it's getting all this attention. And so now they had, they pulled it down. So you can't like look at it now, but it is of course still archived. Now I am really, I'm not against AI. You know, I think that it should be something that we can use as a tool, you know, but I don't think it should be something that you just plug in the information, it spits out a paper or an obituary and you just don't even look at it, no proofreading and just like, boop, just put it up where you want to put it. I mean, come on, the dumbest human in the world would have looked at that paper one time and said, oh, wait, is this supposed to be useless? I mean, we wouldn't be having this conversation, you know? So all of this happened on the heels of Microsoft just getting in trouble or not really trouble, but you know, like people trouble about AI. There was a travel guide out of Ottawa, which indicated that a must see destination was a food bank. And so people were looking at this like, well, a food bank, you know, so of course they get all kinds of backlash behind that because people are saying, hey, AI wrote this and they didn't even bother proofreading it and they just put this straight up, you know? Again, an easy one. Pick the dumbest person in the room. Hey, could you, could you proof th read this for me, please? Let me know what you think. And they were like, Wait, oh, I have a question. This says that we should go to a food bank. I mean, th there you go. You find it and you'd fix it. We wouldn't be having this problem, right? Mm -hmm. Right, Microsoft. Okay, so then Microsoft has a spokesperson that comes up and they say, well, I can't confirm or deny that any of these were AI, but we just need to be a little bit more accurate. I'm like, really? Oh, the news should be accurate. What a, you know, what a novel idea. The news should be accurate, you know. Okay, we'll take that for now. We'll see what happens. We'll keep our eyes on that. But again, 
AI for a tool, I think it's the bomb. I don't see a problem with it. But when you're just taking stuff right from AI's mouth and putting it up and not even looking at it one time, that's just lazy and ridiculous to me. Yeah. Okay. Well, this, thank you for sticking around for my first broadcast. I appreciate you all. And if you liked it, please like or subscribe to the, to the channel. It would help me out tremendously if you did that. And so I guess I'm just going to go ahead and sign off and just remind you all to stay happy, stay healthy, and stay out of people's business, right? Bye.